Okay, Math 31s. Uh, today we're going to do our uh, integration of trig functions. What I want you to remember is that uh, dy dx of cos of x is negative sine x, and dy dx of sine x is just cos x. Okay, so those are our derivatives. So when I go to do my antiderivative or my integration of 5 cos, cos is now the antiderivative. is just going to be sine x plus my constant. Okay, so working backwards. So we're going from the derivative to the antiderivative. If I do another example, let's say I have sine x plus 1 over x cubed dx. Okay, I split it into my two integrals of sine x dx plus my integral of x to the power of negative 3 dx. And now I'm going to get negative cos x, which is the antiderivative of sine x, plus here I'm going to have my x add an exponent, negative 2 divided by negative 2 plus a constant. Clean it up a little bit, negative cos x minus 1 half x to the power of negative 2 plus my constant or negative cos x minus 1 over 2x squared plus my constant. For example number 2, uh, the antiderivative of secant squared, and you guys will have all of these as a formula sheet, secant squared, um, we are going to let u equal our angle. So we want to replace our angle just to show you. You don't have to. But then my derivative du dx is 8. And then again dx is equal to du over 8. So if I wanted to put that in there. And then when I write this as negative secant squared of u du over 8, that 8 is going to stay. So then the antiderivative of secant squared is tan. So I'm going to get negative tan of u. And that we have that 8 plus my constant. Replace back your u, we get negative tan 8x over 8 plus my constant. So you're going to want your formula sheets out for the antiderivatives of secant squared, which is tan. Um, example number three, I know these are not easy, but remember that when you had cosecant u, cotangent u, okay, the antiderivative of this is cosecant, um, negative cosecant. Okay, so so you just need to know what the antiderivatives are, which are on your formula sheet. So here, if I let u equal that angle again, du dx is 12x squared, and dx is du over 12x squared. And I know that I have something because I have a product rule here, so I know I needed to use that u substitution. So I'm going to get my 2x squared cosecant u cotangent u du over 12x squared. Now, this 2 and this become a 6. My x squareds and x squareds cancel. If you've done your substitution properly, then that is what will happen every single time. And I'm just going to pull out my 1, 6. So the antiderivative of cosecant cotangent, we're going to get negative 1, 6 of cosecant, plug back in my angle, 4x cubed, and add my constant. Okay, so you really want to know what your uh, antiderivatives are by using the formula sheet. Um, this one, product, need u substitution. Now how do I decide what to replace? Well, I know 
that if I let sine, sorry, sine of x equal u du dx is cos of x. And what's going to happen when I plug that in is um, dx du over cos of x. That linear cos x right here is going to cancel. So sometimes it's guessing and checking what to replace um, so that you don't have a product left. So I'll show you when we plug that in, we get 3u squared because sine of x is u. And then I have my cos x times du over cos x. My cos x is cancel, and now I just have 3u squared du. Now I can take the antiderivative of this, which is just going to be 3u cubed divided by 3 plus my constant. My 3s cancel, I have u cubed plus my constant. And then I put back in my sign x plus my constant. So u substitution is really helpful. This next one, sine x cos x, it doesn't matter which one you choose to replace. Um, I'm actually going to use an identity to make this easy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one half and a two to make this a double angle. It's very similar to a double angle. So I didn't change the equation because this is just one, but now I can rewrite this as one half sine of two x dx. And now it's a nice, easy uh, simplification. Again, if you wanna let u equal that angle of two x, du dx is two, dx is du over two. And when I plug that back in here, I already have a half sine of u times du over 2. So I get 1 fourth sine of u du. Take the antiderivative of sine, which is cos, negative So negative cos, and plug back in your u which was 2x, and add your constant. Now, there are a couple other ways of doing this one. Um, I'll show you another way. If I let u equal sine x, du dx is cos x, dx is equal to du over cos x. So what I could have done is I had my sine x, which I've now let be u, times cos x, times du over cos x, and my cos x is cancel, I'm left with u du. Take the antiderivative, I get u to the power of 2 divided by 2 plus my constant, plug back in what u was, which was sine, and we get sine squared x over 2 plus my constant. Now I know that's not the same answer that we got over here, but this is a double angle and this is not. With more identities, we, can, we would get the same answer. We could have also replaced sine x, but I won't get into it. That's enough. So you will have answers that look different. Doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means they used a different technique to solve the antiderivative. And that is okay, especially when it comes to trigonometry. So I'm going to do two more, and I know these are not easy, so that's all I'm going to post for this week. So example, uh, actually I'll do three more. Here, what to replace? Look at your derivatives. And antiderivatives to see what to cancel. So let u equal secant x is probably the best one. 
du dx equals secant x times x. Then I get dx is equal to du over my secant x tan x. So when I go and plug it back in here, I have 5 u to the power of 4 tan x times, replace this, du over secant x tan x. What happens? My tan x is canceled, and one of these secant x is canceled. Remember, this is secant x. So I'm left with 5 u to the power of 3 du. Now I'm going to get the antiderivative, which is going to be 5 u to the power of 4 over 4 plus a constant. Plug back in my secant 5 over 4 secant to the power of 4x plus a constant. And that is how we do our u substitution. 7, again, we have a product here. So what do we want to replace? Most likely the radicand, which is cotangent x minus 1. du dx is the negative cosecant squared x. dx then equals du over negative cosecant squared x. You can see what's going to happen in my integral when I have u to the power of a half. I have this cosecant squared x, but when I replace this dx with my du, this one and this one cancel, but don't forget there's a negative there. Now I take the antiderivative, negative 3. I add my exponent of 1, so I get 3 halves divided by 3 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. Those cancel plus my constant. I get negative 2u to the power of 3 halves plus my constant. Plug back in what u is equal to and add my constant. Okay, one more. Notice, what do you think we're going to replace here? Obviously, it's going to be... Um, my radical. I'm just going to rewrite this. And you can see that we have a product here. Now with this product, I'm going to replace my, um, my angle, which is x to the power of 2 thirds. And I'm going to take the derivative, which is 2 thirds x to the power of negative a third. dx is du over my x to the power of negative third. We get 3 halves when we divide. And so when I put it into here, I have my 3 over 2 x to the power of negative a third cos of x to the power of 2, uh, u, sorry. And then my du over my x to the power of negative, th I'll rewrite it the way it happened, so it's less confusing, cos of u times my x to the power of negative a third times du, which was 3 over 2 x to the power of negative a third. So you can see that this cancels this. We're left with 3 over 2 cos of u du. From here, antiderivative, 3 over 2. We don't add exponents with our cosines and our sines. Remember, the antiderivative is sine of u plus our constant. Add back in that x to the power of 2 That's my u. And there's my final answer. So I know this is a lot, um, especially because we just did trig last week. So I'll just assign a few of these. And give those a try. <laughs>